performance management redesign sounds so boring, it's unfortunately, it's just everything, right? Because every single employee lives inside a performance management system of some kind. It's how you get pro uh, paid, it's how you get promoted, it's how you get evaluated. So everybody, in a sense, should be concerned about what kind of performance management systems exist. As we looked at uh, the last two years, as we looked at what people have done, here's a way to understand what's happened. People have thrown out ratings because they didn't like ratings. And then these companies that have thrown out the ratings have snuck them back in again. And indeed there are reports, CEB, the conference executive board, just released a report a couple of weeks ago, uh, or a month or two ago rather, saying that, that actually companies that kept ratings were more productive than companies that didn't. It's a bogus piece of research, it's silly. Bogus piece of research. It's not a very well done piece of research. Um, but everyone got everyone's attention. Oh, should we have ratings or not? And this kind of spark the debate again. The whole thing is, is ludicrous. The whole thing is a flipping red herring. The whole thing's a red herring. Because when you think of performance management redesign, there are actually, and I know you've heard this, but there are actually two problems. There's performance acceleration, which is how do we get more performance? And there's performance measurement. How do we actually measure the true range of performance on all of our people? reliably. Performance measurement, performance acceleration. Two totally different problems that have to be solved in two totally different ways. Now ratings. Where do ratings live? Ratings actually were began, they lived over here. They were a way to reliably reveal range of performance so that we can invest differentially in people, whether it's pay, or promote, or succession planning, or deployment, whatever it is. That's where ratings lived. As it happens, ratings do this measurement job really badly because it turns out that human beings are not reliable raters of other human beings. It's something called the idiosyncratic rater effect that means when I rate you on anything, 61, 62% of my rating of you on anything reflects me, not you. Which means my rating of you actually reveals me, not you. Which is a problem because we end up paying you, promoting you, training you, deploying you, as though the rating reflects you. And it doesn't, it reflects me. So ratings are bad at performance measurement because there is what's called a rater source effect problem. I, as a source of a rating, am unreliable and will always be. The unconscious rater bias is it's a really strong effect, and it's an enduring effect. You can't get it out of me. So ratings suck as a measurement tool. We need a, a way to reliably reveal the true range of performance across all of our people that isn't undermined by this idiosyncratic rater problem. Right? We need a way to do that. Ratings don't do that. So you throw out ratings, not because you don't like ratings, you throw out ratings because they're bad data. They purport to measure one thing when they actually measure another thing. You throw out ratings because they're bad data. That doesn't mean you don't need data. We do need a reliable way to measure performance. We need good data. You can't throw out ratings unless you've got a way to put good data back in. A number of companies, I won't mention their names, have thrown out ratings for the wrong reason. They threw out ratings because people didn't like them. Okay, don't do that. You throw out ratings because they're bad data. The issue isn't ratings or no ratings. The issue is do you want good data or bad data? If you want good data, you have to throw out ratings because they're bad data. Okay, get rid of ratings for the right reason. You've got rid of ratings because they're bad data. All right, so how do you get good data? How do we get good data on 200, 300, 1,000, 10,000, 50,000 people in our company? How do we get good data that reliably reveals their differential performance? That is a super interesting question. That is a measurement question. And nobody, not Accenture, not Goldman, not GE, not PW, nobody seems to be answer, or trying to answer that question. That is a huge presenting problem question. Most of us in HR haven't even begun to engage with that question. But the key question from a performance measurement standpoint is how do we reliably reveal the true range in performance across everybody in our organization so we can invest differentially in them? That's the problem that we have to solve. No one seems to be solving it. And there's a whole bunch of sort of red herringy articles about are ratings good or are they bad? As though it's a matter for debate. For 40, 50 years we've known 
about this idiosyncratic rate, uh, idiosyncratic rate of problem. Ratings are not a good way to measure something. 